Hey there, everybody. It's getting to be hipster hat wear season, which is uh, one of my favorite seasons of the year. But uh, over the past couple of days, I've been able to find and remove even more metal fencing that's been buried uh, in the duff and litter in the woods. Some of it's under soil. Some of it is so intermingled with some of the tree roots that it's easier and safer and all of all of the things that we try to do um, better it's overall better to just cut it at a spot where I can effectively rebury it and leave it in with the tree roots that I would otherwise have to cut through or damage in order to get this guy out so we have some newly opened up areas, and I thought I would show you guys what I've been doing with them and some of the considerations that are going into that. Let's take a look. So you'll likely notice kind of a pattern of buildup and clear space here. Um, I think the most effective search term for the building strategy that we go for would be something like a beaver dam analog um, or a BDA. The NRCS and USDA, uh, US Forestry Service, and probably state and local DOTs will have guidelines around beaver dam analogs and more specifically building codes for your particular area when it comes to berms. Um, I've found multiple county and state Department of Transportation documents on guidelines for berms, for runoff control, erosion mitigation, and the like. And so we're going to get down to the bottom here. And we're going to turn around kind of slow and show you what it looks like from the bottom. And so these are my beaver dam berms, BDBs. I don't, I'm not really an acronym person, so we're going to knock that off now. I thought it might be funny. It's not. Um, so what we have is several logs placed on contour lines. We've been chasing the contour lines from the stuff over there, which is where some of the other wood chip piles have been placed. Over here, what we have are several logs placed on contour, and then slightly upslope, we're placing a lot of the branch wood. So, stuff like these guys is pointed upslope. You can see the butt of one of them right there. And in crisscrosses. And we intermingle um, the ones pointing upslope with the ones heading along our contour at a particular elevation. And I try to have either the ends of the branch wood, so to take this guy out. Something like this, uh, in my view, should either, this is going to sound kind of silly, but it should either be placed kind of like that with a bit of the back end sticking out this way. You can see a handful of them represented here like that. Um, or it should be kind of crisscrossy, heading at a diagonal. Um, and the reason for doing it either of those two ways is to A, in this way, in this orientation, you are able to put a, a more even layer and distribution of weight, which will then pinch the things that it is going below, or that is resting on top of. And when you have it in this orientation here, 
what you're doing is applying that same principle, but to the downhill flow receiving side of your berm, which transfers more weight and stability and interlocking to the pieces below it. We generally don't go any narrower than three feet wide, and many DOTs will advocate for uh, a five foot wide minimum when you are doing um, wood chips. It's generally wider if you are doing something like an aggregate stone, and even wider than that with sediment like sand, clay, loam, or compost. And in those particular situations, it's definitely advisable to have some kind of container. If you're watching our channel, you're probably inclined to go with something like cotton or wool, and I would be in agreement with you. The eventual goal is to have plant roots and soil microbiology holding these systems together. So, with that in mind, we have the space between, collect it down, and applying weight and even distribution as we apply it. If we come over here, you can see kind of this crisscrossing and there'll be several more branches from up in this little area that are going to be widening this section out coming this way up slope as it is considerably steeper there when it's really really steep and that's that's a greater than 20 percent grade um, you want to make sure that you have structures along the way to diffuse everything. If I had nothing in place uphill, and this was bare, or this was grass or lawn, and I was expecting this little rinky-dink ragtag bunch of sticks uh, with a dream to stop a 100-year or a 200-year rain event, I, I haven't I haven't got a shot. It's gonna it's gonna wipe this out and we're gonna have a whole lot of spillage as it makes its way down. But with intermediary structures, this one being the second to last section of catchment before we hit our pathway and a big weighed in diffusive area for the water that's traveling down this slope. But uphill, we have a catchment structure and a catchment structure that you can see all the way over there. If I zoom in, you can see the back end of it up there. I think that the Beaver Dam analog construction guides are going to be your best friend if this is the kind of system that you are looking to foster on a piece of sloped land. I'm not an engineer by train, uh, by trade or training, so for those of you with a steeper than 25% grade, uh, it's probably worth involving a landscape engineer or a landscape architect. Someone with the math skills that I lack to tell you what the least damaging approach is going to be. And generally speaking, they're smart enough people that they can work with a materials list uh, within reason. And so opting for natural materials is definitely an option for you. And so you can see our little contour markings here. You can see that along the path at the same level. And then we break into this bad Larry that travels all the way across the slope. We can have a few more, and I'm thinking 
I haven't taken out the measurement yet because I'm planning on uh, bringing a few bits more in this area down to do my next measurements at another given elevation. But I'm thinking that it'll probably want to meander up this way, or that I'll want to split this ridge much like it is kind of centered around this tree and this tree. There's a general break in the pattern between whether it's going to flow that direction or down the slope in this direction. Things that I'm building notwithstanding. I think that the beaver dam analogs are the best method of explaining it and if you go looking for some of the documentation uh, one of which I will link below in the description. Um, and the only real consideration that we are doing is um, reversing the direction. We are not trying to stop the water specifically on this slope, although we could. Um, the beaver dam analogs are really for uh, flatter areas, and our consideration in doing this is to build almost a self-perpetuating um, terracing system. So we're setting up the catchment for the downstream travel of silt and accumulated organic matter. Brad, Brad Lancaster uh, advocates for as much organic matter to do your water catchment structures with as possible as that has a lower chance of washing out on the bottom, although that is totally something that could happen. I find that in the wooded spaces, the deflection from the overhead rain by all of the green material, as well as the vast network of root mat, really does help to hold this in place. So sometimes we'll build up one of these structures right against a tree we know isn't really going to stay, and we will use that as a very stable sort of pin or pole for the stability of these projects. I thought that it would be okay to stop, take a breather, show you folks some of the considerations that go into how we are thinking about these particular spaces on our hillside. I have another setup that I'm working on on that side, and so I'll hope to have that ready to show you guys in some time. I make no promises. I will say that I've been working with Milton um, a little bit as kind of an advisor as I go about a project that I'm working on for you guys, and so I'll I'll be excited to unveil that in the coming weeks because I think it'll be a fun project for me. I think it'll be a worthwhile endeavor in the pursuit of knowledge and sharing it. And I'm genuinely hopeful that it'll be super helpful for all of you folks. So, yeah. That's that's our story for today. I'm going to go switch food around and get back to moving leaf litter around. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Happy planting. <laughs>